Today I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, some of the common things that go wrong with burnishers. And a burnisher is a machine that shines the floor. That's all a burnisher does. One of the most important things that goes wrong with a burnisher is that you can pop a circuit, all right? That happens for several reasons. The first reason, what I want to go over is the cord. This particular burnisher has a 75 foot cord. This cord is a 14 gauge cord. If you look on any cord in the United States, there's a stamp that goes all down the cord and it has all the specifications for the cord. And this says 14 AWG, so it's a 14 gauge cord. What happens is a lot of people run an extension cord and should not be needed with the 75 foot cord I have here. But if you do need to run an extension cord on a burnisher or any machine that plugs into the wall, you need to know the gauge of the wire on the machine and you need to go down one size. In this instance, a 12 gauge. You need to have a 12 gauge extension cord. So with electrical, the lower the number, the bigger the wire. If you were to go with a 16 gauge, you would definitely pop circuits and heat up the cord to a point where you might not even be able to touch it. So that's critical. The next thing with a cord that's really critical is that sometimes a cord will get abraded. If you see any wires, discontinue use of that machine until you can have it repaired. In addition, the cord plug is a big thing. A lot of people rip these out of the wall without going up and actually pulling them out of the wall by hand. So what happens is this is the ground and these two are the power and the ground wire oftentimes gets broken off, maybe left in the wall. And then you have no protection, grounding protection on the machine. And you could definitely have a short somewhere and then pop a circuit. Another, another thing with burnishes that's uh, very important is how do you put a pad on and maybe what is the correct pad? Because if somebody's using the wrong pad, you can definitely pop a circuit uh, with the machine. An example of the wrong pad would be either this red pad, and you might not think that anybody would use a red pad on a burnisher, but we do see it. And a red pad is made for a slow speed swing machine, buffer stripper, and it is not color fast. So if you have a little bump in the hall and you burnish over it with a red pad, you're gonna get the red transferred into the wax on the floor. So in addition, it's not balanced to go the speed of a burnisher. This burnisher travels at 2000 RPM. This pad is good for up to 300 revolution per minute. Look at the box your pads come in and typically the darker the pad, it is not a burnishing pad, all right? The light of the pad typically is a good burnishing pad. So the red pad, they're out. Number two, the most common pad that we see on burnishers that is wrong is the white pad. This is a 3M 4100 super polish pad. This is an old fashioned pad and it was used on swing machines to spray buff floors. Um, if you look at the box on any white pad, it says maximum RPM, 600 RPM. So if this is only good for 600 RPM, it's not good for this machine. It's very soft, extremely soft, and it will stick to the floor and it will create extra drag on the motor and thus pop a circuit. You can also heat the floor up so much that you get black burnt wax marks being transferred onto this pad. So white pads, not for burnishers. We're done with that one. The so next issue is how do I put a pad on a burnisher? And many people um, don't do this correctly. So this is 
the pad retainer. Take it off here. What a lot of people do is they put the pad retainer on the pad and then they screw the pad on the machine. The correct way to do this is actually to center the pad first. All right, so I'm going to put the pad on. And as I spin this, hopefully you can see how out of center that is. This is going to create a lot of vibration on the machine. So what you really need to do, you need to get this as even as possible. First, once you're pretty, there we go, that's pretty good. The most centered you get, then you can put the retainer on. The next problem we have is the retainer. People many times don't screw this in far enough. You need to screw this in so the pad is really concave in here. So I'm holding the retainer and I'm turning this nice and tight and now the pad is nice and concave. This will not touch the ground. The complaint we get from customers is I have all these swirls on the floor and if it's like a four inch wide swirl going down the floor it's the retainer kept capturing the, the floor. Um, one of the final things is many uh, burnishes today are dust control. And a dust control burnisher um, you cannot spray buff with. You actually shouldn't spray buff with any burnishing burnisher, but I know people do that. If you have a dust control burnisher, do not spray buff with it. It's really designed to be a dry pad on the floor. You can put a restore product on the floor first and have it dry. And what happens is if you spray buff, the, there are ports that the air come up through and they go into a bag. And those ports can get plugged up from all that moisture in the spray buff. The other thing is people don't check these bags. If you don't check this bag and the bag gets full, your machine stops picking up dust and it starts blowing dust everywhere. So check the bag regularly. Uh, on this advanced machine, Typically, if you use this every day, you're going to change the bag once a week. 